Zviad Gamsa Khurdia was born in 1913 in Tbilisi. His father was Konstantine Gamsa Khurdia, an influential 20th century Georgian author and historian. In 1956, Zviad and his acquaintance, Merab Kostava, founded an underground youth organization, Gurgasliani, a reference to Vakhtan Gurgasawi. This, along with his anti Soviet demonstrations in 1956 and 1958, led him to be arrested. However, this made him a notable human rights campaigner and anti-Soviet leader among the Georgian population. In 1973, Gamsa Khurdia and Kostava created the first human rights organization in the Caucasus, the Human Rights Initiative Group. Gamsa Khurdia and Kostava, together, rose to fame in the aftermath of the Soviet Union's violent suppression of peaceful protesters on Rustaveli Avenue in Tbilisi on April 9, 1989. Following the April 9th tragedy, Gamsa Khurdia became Georgia's primary advocate for independence from the Soviet Union. And following an October 28, 1990 election, Gamsa Khurdia's party, the Round Table Free Georgia Bloc, gained a majority in the Republic's Supreme Council, with Gamsa Khurdia elected as its chairman. During the prelude to Georgia's independence, Gamsa Khurdia popularized the view that Georgians were victimized in their own state. His anti-Soviet sentiments went hand-in-hand hand with Georgian nationalism. This was not uniquely Georgian, and was one of the primary reasons for the breakup of the Soviet Union. Once independence was achieved and Gamsa Khurdia became president, it became evident that Gamsa Khurdia had no strategy for institutional development, and he was unable to create state bodies with authority, legitimacy, or the capacity to execute policies. Instead, Gamsa Khurdia promoted nationalism in education, and his first acts after coming to power, he restored the flag, anthem, and emblem of the Democratic Republic of Georgia. He equated the Georgian Orthodox Church with Georgian nationhood and encouraged its evangelical activities in non-Georgian areas. When the state could no longer maintain physical and economic security, national solidarity was the solution. Gamsa Khurdia chose to use a strong president system of government, based largely on France during the Charles de Gaulle era. Gamsa Khurdia instituted a National Security Council, which consisted of law enforcement agencies and his closest advisors in the mid-1990s. However, following the August 1991 Moscow Putsch, Gamsa Khurdia demoted his own National Guard and dismissed its commander, Tengiz Kitovani, who was himself a former sculptor and a school friend of Gamsa Khurdia who now refused to follow Gamsa Khurdia's motion. Among those loyal to Kitovani was Gamsa Khurdia's own prime minister, Tengiz Sigua. Following this, it became increasingly clear that anti-Gamsa Khurdia paramilitary forces became more legitimate than Gamsa Khurdia and his own government. On September 2nd, during an opposition rally outside the Kino Sakhli in Tbilisi, the National Guard used lethal force, resulting in numerous deaths. Many Georgians would see this for what it was, the beginning of a brutal civil war, with Georgians turned against Georgians, occurring in their very own capital. By September 27th, Georgia's disparate opposition was unified in calling for Gamsa Khurdia's resignation. Over the course of months of negotiations, Gamsa Khurdia's own party split, while his supporters camped in tents in front of the government house. In the meanwhile, even Patriarch Ilya II supported an organization created by Gamsa Khurdia's defectors. Tbilisi became gridlocked with violence as his supporters continued to occupy government buildings and television stations. On September 25th, Gamsa Khurdia declared a state of emergency following deadly clashes between his National Guard and opposition protesters, going so far as to threaten to dissolve parliament and establish a presidential rule. Both pro- and anti-Gamsa Khurdia forces managed to obtain former Soviet military equipment during this time, which only enhanced the casualties. Estimates are between 1,000 and 3,000 people on each side perished in the fighting. The fighting ended at Central Tbilisi, most notably the area around Rustaveli Avenue, was obliterated by bombs and gunfire. Just 15 months after becoming Georgia's first president after the fall of the Soviet Union, Gamsa Khurdia fled his country. First, he went south to Armenia where he lived not only in exile, but also in control of many of his loyal paramilitary forces, which remained in his native Samagrelo region in Georgia's west. 
during Edward Shevardnadze's first years as Georgia's second president. Kamsa Kurdi's forces in Samagrelo wreaked havoc, fighting what they believed to be Tbilisi chauvinism. In September of 1993, after emerging from Chechnya, Gamsa Kurdia established his capital in Zugdidi and demanded Samagrelo's independence from Georgia. Gamsa Kurdia's forces used repossessed Soviet weaponry to advance to the region's southernmost city of Poti. Shevardnadze, knowing that the country's own military was too weak, relied heavily on paramilitary forces, namely the Mikhedrioni, headed by a former Gamsa Kurdia ally to rid Samagrelo of Zviad Gamsa Khurdia. Zviad Gamsa Khurdia was declared dead on January 1st, 1994, in his house near Zugdidi. Gamsa Khurdia emerged in extreme times, and his tenure was characterized by economic collapse, state fragmentation, and political polarization, all occurring at breakneck speed. This was mostly due to the nature of the time in which he came to power, the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Gamsa Kurdia rode waves of anti-Soviet discontent in Georgia. Georgians, both then and now, viewed the Soviet Union as an occupying imperial power. Yet, over half of Georgia's top exports went to Russia. How could Gamsa Kurdia reconcile such a livid anti-Soviet sentiments with the harsh reality of almost total economic dependence on Moscow? Not only this, but Gamsa Kurdia faced an ethnically and politically fragmented state. There was little loyalty among non-Georgians to the new state, and the Georgian political opposition had not learned the rules of peaceful competition. If Gamsa Kurdia had chose to play his cards right, he could have united Georgia. Instead, Gamsa Kurdia chose to paint the picture that Georgians were the main victims of the Soviet Union, rather than show that the Abkhaz, South Ossetians, Armenians, and all other ethnic groups in Georgia were equal victims of Soviet aggression. Gamsa Kurdia's usage of Georgian nationalism provided the Abkhaz and South Ossetians in Georgia a strong impetus for separation. Gamsa Kurdia remains a controversial figure in present-day Georgia. Many view him as an exemplary Georgian patriot who fought for his homeland, while others see him as a jingoist and failed populist. Regardless, Gamsa Kurdia was empowered by the zeitgeist of his era. For more information on Samagrelo and Georgia, visit our website www.visiting-georgia.com. Thanks for watching.